Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It's gonna be a little bit different of a video here. I just got a lot of photos and videos that I've been collecting over the last, I guess, month and a half. I'm just gonna share those with you and talk over. Here's some photos of uh, the property. My friend Jordan Valona came out from Chick Chick Photo and took a lot of photos. Uh, something that I'm not very uh, good at keeping up on. So he walked around and gives you a little insight into the life of, of the, the area we're in and everything else. So yeah, beautiful little goats. So I think uh, maybe early May, I had my bachelor party out here at the property. I had, you know, a tight crew, all my best buds, and we ripped around the property on dirt bikes. Uh, we basically oh, set up a 200 foot slip and slide and got pretty crazy on that. You know, shot a bunch of potato launchers and just had a great time, man. It definitely took me about a week and a half to recover from everything, you know, just kind of craziness. So after the bachelor's party, I ended up going out to the Maker's Fair. I was invited by Dezo and the guys over there. Had a great time, saw a lot of cool projects. Uh, answered a lot of questions about my project. Mostly, uh, is there gonna be flamethrowers on it? Are you gonna take out the Burning Man? How fast is it gonna go? But uh, really cool people out there. Got a lot of good contacts. Um, and I actually met Jimmy DiResta. If you haven't seen his page, I'd definitely go over and check it out. Really cool guy, super stoked on the whole thing. First day Jordan came into town, I actually took him over to Jack Costello's house. Um, I wanted to see kind of um, what his body techniques were for doing the latch and uh, talking about all different techniques for fiberglassing. Uh, I think I'm going to go with an aluminum body, but I definitely want to see how he attaches it to, to the whole chassis and you know integrating the windshield and everything. So we stayed over there for about five hours just kind of looking at everything on the walls and talking to Jack. and. Super awesome guy. If you don't know Jack Costello, you should definitely Google him to see his achievements. He's been going to Bonneville for about 60 years. And along looking at those posters on the wall, we came across this little hot rod he had. And turns out it was in a little mini garage next to the house. And I convinced Jack to let me borrow it for the weekend so I could drive off from my wedding with uh, my wife and I. And, uh, you know, I think he caught on to that as a cool little notion for this car. He wanted to see it get used. So we dragged it out and started it up. and. Yeah, it actually fired up pretty well. So here's he cl him cleaning the dust off, and here's a little photo of me driving off. So next day, uh, yeah, I'm getting ready for my wedding. No, looking all fancy. Put a Mexican blanket down so we wouldn't get too dirty driving off, but an awesome day. Everything turned out amazing. Uh, it was just everything I could possibly wish for. Also, um, I'd like to say thanks for everyone who came out to the wedding. It was very small, but a lot of people came from out of town. It was just so good to see all the friends and family for everyone. This is my beautiful new wife hanging out next to the hot rod, and I can't be happier. I, I love her so much, and this is going to be so good. So, But yeah, so moving on from there, we uh, you know took a little break after that and back to work. So headed over to the metal shop. Uh, my, my local metal shop is Metalworks in Santa Clara, uh, Ed. Super cool guy, gives you a great uh, great price on everything. And I went over there to kind of find some supporting structure for building the body. And what this is, this is a 5 8 and a 3 quarter inch 065 steel uh, square tubing. I'm gonna use that uh, along the outside of the chassis to do a lot of the support for the aluminum sheets and all the bends. After that, we moved on to Cuddy Clothing, good buddy of mine, Cuddy. And he got some hats done for me, which I'm really excited about. So we got that clean looking Lark logo, Lark Machine Co. Blue on a auto tall hat so uh, be sure to keep a lookout for that I'm setting up my website so you can purchase those online and help out with the project looking real fresh yeah back to work uh, my buddy Dustin came by and wanted to help out so I put him to work um, he took the VCU and the CAN bus shield on it which is actually an Arduino um, and cut some of the pins off and I wanted to solder some of the the external 5 volt um, input lines directly and have them be kind of hot glued and zip tied to the board so he sat there and uh, soldered everything up which was really cool worked out really well um, definitely a lot better than how it used to be which is kind of pins slidden and everything 
Also got him helping me out building the, uh, the battery voltage. So here's him cutting some what, uh, zero gauge wire uh, with some PVC cutters, but it seemed to work out okay. So along with ramping the voltage, we kind of tidied up all the big wiring and the small wiring. So here's him trimming out some of the high voltage uh, covers for the BDU. You can see it basically clicks onto the top of the wire, zip ties in place, and keeps anybody from touching anything or tools falling in. All right, throttle time. Holy shit. Reverse, yeah? Yeah, it goes forward and backward. Goes forward and backward. That's, that's what it needs to do. It's doing it. <laughs> oh my god! street dude oh my god it is I decided to cat up some uh, wheel sensors for the front and back these are hall sensors that are integrated into a plastic housing these mount on the wheels and have a pickup magnet they're gonna be comparing the rpms between the front and rear wheel and uh, basically if I have over a 10 to 15 percent difference between front and wheel rpm it'll be um, lighting up a indicator light inside the chassis so I know to let off the throttle um, essentially I could push this back into a five volt signal later on that could actually uh, regulate the throttle as kind of a, a traction control but I think for now we're just gonna move forward with what we got and we can improve after we've kind of hit our milestones of safety and everything else. Um, also the weather's been getting really nice so we got some new wildlife floating around here and a pretty decent sized frog and I don't think Fry's ever seen one before so here's him freaking out about it which is pretty funny. So after Dustin left, we got the motor humming, uh, got all the wires on together, and I wanted to take it out. So it's actually got reversed. This is one of the first times I actually got the bike moving, and I was just freaking out, man. Super stoked, super amazing. Um, this is a couple days after that Dustin left, and then a couple days after this, a buddy of mine, um, Dennis Sanchez from Morgan Hill, came out um, to take a look at the the chassis because cool? he's going to actually help me build the body on it. We're going all aluminum, and this guy is. A phenomenal aluminum metal worker he's got uh, probably dozens or multiple dozens of motorcycles he's built over the years and he's just really excited about the project and want to come check it out so we're working together with this to come up how we're going to do the panels and how we're going to place them and really excited to have this guy on board because he is just a wealth of knowledge for everything along with doing the design for the body and setting up the panels or setting up the support um, I did some CAD on there and I sent that out to a guy from San Jose State called Mark Lynn. Um, he's uh, going to school for his master's for aerospace and he ran some computational fluid dynamics on the model. Came up with some theoretical um, numbers for the for the bikes and trying to figure out what the downforce is. So his results show that about 100 pounds downforce at 250 miles per hour. And from what he got, a theoretical number was about 0.07 coefficient of drag, which is extremely low. But there's no wheel cutouts on this. There's no seams, there's no rivets. So I expect this to be anywhere from 1.3 to 1.1 1 .1 as far as coefficient of drag and that would just be amazing. Once again helping out with this whole entire project and making sure I can reach those records. So from there I just want to geek out in the parking lot, or parking lot, I guess my dirt little driveway here which is probably isn't the best idea but couldn't help myself so I um, wanted to test the forward throttle, rear throttle, make sure the, v the code worked and everything. So. Soon to come are going to be some higher speed runs. I got to switch out those little shopping cart wheels on the landing gear so they don't explode at higher speeds. And after that, I can take it out on the street and maybe open it up a little bit and find out, uh, you know, when that balance point comes. So, special thanks to everyone who, uh, yeah, has helped out with this project so far, and Jordan especially. We got together and we shot these. Uh, he shot these photos in the backyard, and they're just phenomenal. This bike looks amazing. Jordan did an amazing job. It, I blew my mind like how he could make this bike look so amazing so i want to say thank you jordan so much for all your help it was a great time having you here for a whole entire week and i wish you didn't have to leave but you know we'll be seeing you soon hopefully so thanks so much guys for watching really appreciate it i'm going to keep up on these videos a little bit more and the body build's definitely going to have me moving forward i'll be sure to capture all of that and put it into videos coming up a little bit more timely so be sure to comment like and subscribe really appreciate you guys watching and have a good one